So something I've thought of for a long time with Henrik Pedersen, he seems like he's the bad cop out of the two. Hello and welcome to this video. You could like, share and subscribe to the channel. Much appreciate it. Liking helps the algorithm. Sharing gets in front of people's faces and subscribing let me know you like the channel. Hit that notification bell to let you know when video go live. So, here's the thing. Chevy went, they have very high standards now with Danny Rule and his coaching staff. And one of the members of the coaching staff, very popular, but I have always thought that he is the disciplinarian of the two, who's the one that's going to really, if something needs fixing or something goes out of line, he's going to the, be the man you go talk to or he's going to come and actually have a, his say. Now, we've got lots of different people who are in charge of when the internal back, backroom staff, he gets people's opinion. Sasha Lentz is your, uh, basically deals with the mind, the mental side of things. But then you've got Pedersen who was, when we first got him in, actually in a manager position at a top club in Denmark before he came on. And it was kind of seen as a quite a big thing to happen and get him in. Now, Dominic Iorfa has turned around and said this. The one way to put it, <laughs> he's a bit mad to be fair, but he's such a nice guy. He's very intent for his football off the pitch. He loves a laugh and loves a joke. But once you get on the training pitch, he's very intense. He's got really high standards. Now, we've seen this part of him already when you've seen some of the behind the match day things and when he was welcoming some of the players back to uh, the t team after preseason. He seemed like he got a really jokey side. But he's definitely not a man you probably want to get on the other head, the wrong end of, if you're not doing your job. He's the one who will turn around and tell you what he's doing. But then we got, I also went on to say to Star, well, it's good, it drives up, it keeps us on our toes as well. You can't afford to be driving into training thinking, oh, I'm a bit tired today, I need to take it easy, because it's, it, if it sees that he will be on you straight away as a group of players, you need that. And that thing, you need someone in the position we got to go, hey, I'm going to be on you if you're a little bit tired today or find out a little bit beforehand if there's something, if there's an issue there. But he will really try and get a, get that kind of thing. I hope he went on to say everyone has a different personality. Someone like Powell is a bit more relaxed and not as intense as Hendrick, but he still demands a lot from your, you in terms of standards. He does in different ways. Let's just say he does doesn't hand out as many rollickings as Henrik does, I'll put it that way. And that's the thing. We I've always thought that it was is who the disciplinarian, or however you say it, was in our backroom staff. I always thought that he was the person we looked at to go, right, it's not working. Bad cop, good cop kind of role. That's your bad cop kind of role. You have it in most coaching setups. Most coaching setups have like a, a, a manager who probably will be the good cop, and then you'll have an assistant who's the bad cop. And it doesn't surprise me at all in that sense. But here's the thing. Knowing that they might get rollicked if something doesn't go right, it's good. I think everyone had that thing. If you are not on your game at all, I think you will find out in one way your job, one way or another. Like your job, you'll find out something in your job or in life. If you're not on it, someone will call you out for it. And I think for us, that is something really needed at times because I don't think we've had that really. Uh, I don't think we had that really under Darren Moore. Uh, we didn't feel like we had that on the Cisco. So having that and having someone who's going to hold the players accountable, I think is a very big component of when they having those high standards that Danny set. So you have something to hold the player to accountable, to hold them accountable of teammates, of men, of mates. If one person drops the ball, you all get back on it together. And I like that. I like the idea of this. But I think that you've always going to have this kind of person who's going to be in the back room staff, who's going to be the one that shouts a little bit and the one that you know if it's going to go wrong, 
that's who you're answering to once you get into training. But let me know what you think. What do you think of the uh, dynamics in our coaching setup? Was it who you thought it was? Um, I I had this. I had the thing. I think some people are going to think Danny got it. I think Danny has got that style of management in him when he need need to. We've seen it a little bit at times. So for me, knowing that Danny got someone you trust, because you got to remember the thing. I think the thing they said about Danny and Hendrick, the tactical freaks. They like tactics. They like playing around with them, and that's something you see where they'll go into the dressing room at half time where you'll have Henrik and Danny still outside while Sasha's taking the uh, team talk. So we've always seen that kind of aspect there. But what do you think? What do you think about this? Find a little bit more insight about the dynamics in the coaching setup.